Hello, I'm Crafty Patty, and thanks for tuning in to watch how to make some fun baby mobiles. The first one I am going to show you, I did make by using the little animals I found on my Cricut. Now, not everybody's got Cricut, so I will be demonstrating on another one that you have more access to. Here's what the little safari little guys look like. You can choose any theme you want, woodland animals, safari, ocean, whatever you want. What I do is I go online and I look for some animals that I like and do choose ones that are more into um, cartoony because you don't want a lot of details because then you have a lot more pieces to cut out and to put together. If you want to do exactly the same ones, then just go on your computer and then type in Woodland Clip Arts and this is the stock number. Once you've decided which little animals you want to do, then you need to enlarge it on to your printer. I've enlarged each little animal so it measures four and a quarter inches or 10.8 centimeters. And I'm gonna be doing the fox with you. The process I use to make each one of these little animals is exactly the same, so it doesn't matter which one you do. You'll want to print this out a couple times because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cutting out the outline of the animal, and then we're going to go in and cut each individual little element. It works really well if you've got some sharp pointed smaller scissors, one for paper, and of course one for cutting out your felt. And don't worry about keeping track of what you need for supplies. I will put a full list of all the supplies that you need to make this mobile in the description box below the video. You'll be cutting two of the outline of your little animal in the color of your choice. And then you think about what is lying on top. And those are the elements you want to cut out. So you've got little pieces for your pattern pieces. So we need to cut out the ears. So let's say we need to go into here. And I'm gonna cut out the white portion of this ear. And you only need to cut out one because you can reverse it for the other ear for your second one. And now we need to cut out this white portion of the fox's face. So we'll cut that out. This portion of the face wasn't actually drawn in on the printout, so I've just drawn in some guidelines with my pen. And on this piece as well, I'm going to cut out the white of his chest and the two little booties. And again, you can reverse this, so you only need to cut out one. And the last thing we need is the cutout of our eyes and the nose. And now that we've got all the pieces that we need, cut them out in the color of your choice. I'm obviously going to use the orange for my little fox. You can take your piece of felt and you can fold it in half so it's wide enough to fit on your little animal. And you can always put a couple pins in just to hold it in place while you cut around your shape. This is where a really sharp pair of pointed scissors comes in handy for when you're cutting into felt like this and something that you can just come into all of your little corners and clip right in there. So 
So just go ahead and cut two of your base in the color of your choice. Once you've got all your pieces cut, I like to just uh, label them and put all my pieces in an envelope so I don't lose them in case I want to make this again. I also searched online for some foliage that would look really cute with the woodland characters as well. So I chose some oak leaves, maple leaves, and some mushrooms maybe to hang down in the middle. So again, you can find those, cut them out on your computer and use them as your templates and cut out lots of leaves. For the next step, I like to just add a very, very small amount of glue. And this is just tacky glue I got from the dollar store, nothing in particular. And we just put a very small amount, just enough to hold the little pieces in place. We will only be doing this on just one. So we can put our backing away and just have the front. And if I'm going to be doing embroidery around the outside, I put a very small dab just into the center and then it won't be hard to stitch around. I've got my little guide here so I know how to place it and this little guy is going to come up in here and do the same for your other pieces. And while all your pieces are setting up a little bit, I will prepare my embroidered thread with my needle. And I like to use the Unique Cruel Embroidery Needles. And I choose one that's got a larger hole, so there's not a fight to try to get the embroidery thread into it. I do prefer to use the DMC Embroidery cotton. Um, I find if I buy the embroidered cotton from the dollar store, it's cheap and it knots up and it twists and it's just not good quality. Now you can choose to do um, an embroidery cotton thread that matches the color and that's cute to do that. Or you can choose to do a darker color so it shows the embroidery thread. So depending on the style that you like, I probably would have chosen to do the orange on the orange, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go a shade darker, well, a few shades darker, so you can see what I'm doing. When you're pulling out your embroidery thread, I don't like to work with anything more than probably one yard or a meter. If you choose to use, if you try to work with anything longer than that, chances are it will knot up and tangle on you. There will always be six strands in your embroidery cotton, but I'm only going to work with three. So you just come in with your fingers and you separate three and three. And what I do is I actually hold this between my knees. The easiest way to thread an embroidery needle is to place your thread over your needle on the edge, pull down hard, slide it off and then come back in with the opening facing up and place it right over top of those threads and then pull up with your fingers and that is the easiest way to thread. And we don't have to place a knot on the end, you can just leave it loose. You can choose to use a blanket stitch or a straight stitch. Today we're going to demonstrate the straight stitch. So let's get started by coming in through the back. And the whole thing with embroidery is trying to place your needle to come out at exactly the same depth out and exactly the same depth across. So for the first stitch, we're just gonna pull this and then leave it 
so you've got a tail on the back. You can just hold that down with your fingers so you don't pull it all the way through. So what you're wanting to do is you want straight lines coming from here to here. So I'm going to place my needle right to the edge, but then I'm going to angle my needle and I'm going to come up the same distance away here and I'm going to come up so it's the same stitch length that I want all the way around. So that's what I'm going to do there. So let's pull that first one through. Okay, so you want to follow that same parallel. So I'm going to come in here and again come up at an angle into the, my next spot. Now I'm making these quite long for demonstration purposes. If you don't want this much showing, then don't come up so far into the little ear or the piece that you're embroidering. So again, straight in and angle up to your next spot. And that's how you do a straight stitch embroidery. And for this one, I'm going to come here and then I'm going to work over to the next spot on top of the little ear and place it over here. And then the next one will be going this way. Okay, I think you got the idea. I'm going to continue around and then we'll show you what I do when I go to finish this. Okay, now I'm on my last stitch. So I'm going to, so I don't have to keep threading this, I'm going to come down, finish off my last straight stitch here, and then I'm going to come up and I'm going to start my little guy over here. Now all of this area in here will be stitched when we add our backing on. So I don't need to come in here, but I'm going to start right where the face is. So I'm going to come up right in here for my first stitch. Just have to poke up till I get the right depth that I want. And we can start right here. So you'll have a straight piece of stitching on the back side, which is fine. Just make sure it's not tight. And now we can go around and we can do our face. So I will carry around and I think you've got the idea and I'll finish this little face area. Now I've gotten this far. So again, what I'm going to do, I want to come up and grab this, this little ear here. So I'm going to finish off this stitch and then come all the way up and grab my first stitch into my ear at the top here. And now I'll go around my ear, then I'll come back and then finish this. And then I'll go to the back again and finish this part here. And again, I'm on my last stitch here. So I'm gonna come right down, finish that stitch off and then come up into my face again and restart and finish the face portion and away we go again.
And again, I don't need to do this part. It's going to get stitched when I add the backing. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to grab my needle just so it stays in place there. And then I'm going to come through, finish off that one stitch, and then come up on the bottom of my face. And start again. And I don't have enough to come back here and finish this one, so I'm just going to finish off my last stitch here. And because I've got my white on the other side, I'm going to just slip into the back of here and you won't see it. And we'll just tie this off. So a little loop, put your needle through the loop. I'm just going to do that one more time. And we'll cut that off. And we'll have to re-thread to do our last bit down here in our little booties. Again, the outside edge will get caught when we sew on the backing. So I'm going to come in with my new thread now and we're going to just start on the side of our little foot. Again, leave some strand on the back side. Hold down with your finger so you don't pull it all the way through. And let's start again. I'm glad I didn't use the black embroidery thread for you because it is hard to see even the brown on the black for camera. So hopefully you get the idea of what's going on here. And then when you get to two areas that are, are close together like this, I'm still going to go in between and come up and finish off my little boot or little foot. So now I'm going to come into my white. So I'm going to go down and into my white. And now I'm going to come up for my white, same as usual. Right down and back up at an angle. And silly me, I forgot to do my nose and my eyes while I was up in this area and now I'm down finishing off my little foot. So you can either have a long strand coming up to here or stop your thread and start again. I'm going to be a little bit lazy and I'm just going to bring this up. I've got a backing in here. So I'm just going to come over here and just catch a little bit of the backing just so it's not a great big strand all the way up. And make sure you don't pull that too tight. And then I can sneak up into here and go for my nose. So let's see if I can get to my nose. There we go. So we'll go up and finish up my nose. All right, so I'm just going to, while I'm on this side, I'm going to come over and finish my eye. So again, 
down and let's come up and I'm going to catch the white and the black and around we go. And I've gone all the way around my eye, so I'm just going to come back in. Come back into my nose. Finish up the top part of my nose. And then I'll come over to this eye and then come back and finish my nose. And then I can come back all the way through to the back and we'll tie this off. Now I could have used another little small piece of black felt and put that into the middle of the eye here, but I really wanted to show you how to do the French knots because they're just so fun. So I'm going to come in with my black. So I'm going to come up through the back here and I'm probably going to aim for close to the middle of the little eye here. And again, pull that through and leave a tail on the back, hold with your finger. And now what we're going to do is I'm gonna wrap my needle three times. One, two, three. I'm gonna put the needle back into the same hole, or very close, not exactly the same hole, otherwise it'll go all the way through. Poke it back in. And then before you get that needle all the way in, you're gonna pull on this and tighten those little rounds that you did on the needle. Hold with your finger and now bring that thread and the needle all the way through the, the back. And there you've made a little French knot. You're so cute. Okay, I'm going to do a couple more because I just want the bottom of the eye here a little bit blacker. So let's go down to the bottom here and slightly to the right of that one. And we'll make another one here. So I'll show you that again. And just go one, two, and three, hold with your thumb, place it close to the other one. And bring it all the way through. And there you've made another one. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fill in the little bottom here with the um, French knots. And so we're going to just uh, bring this through to the back here and come up for the other eye and let's make some more fun little French knots. We'll start in the middle of the eye. And there's his little eyes finished with the French knots, leaving a little bit of white on the top just for some accent. And now we're ready to stuff it and sew around the outside. So grab yourself some polyester stuffing and get your needle set and we'll sew around the outside. So now we've got our top that we're going to put on our back side and making sure all our little ends are tucked in.
and it doesn't matter where you start I think I'm just going to start here and I'll work my way around again you can choose the color you want you can use a, a color that matches the same or do an accent color and because I've done this in this color I'm going to continue for my accent in the same color so let's bring our embroidery thread in the middle here so we don't see it on the back side and we'll just bring it up to get it started and we'll leave a little end inside and match up your front to your back and away we go exactly as before I'm going to come around but I'm going to angle it so I bring it up past my first stitch and again with the straight stitch all the way around into the back angle it forward and go all the way around. And this is the part we did not do when we're putting on our little accents because now we're going to get that part by sewing all the way around the outside. And when you're sewing, just make sure you are catching your back side. I've now got to the section where I can come up and come up and finish up this little part of the face that we didn't sew yet. So again, I'm going to go into my back to make this stitch, but my needle is going to come up into the face at the right distance apart. And then I can finish up sewing the face there. And uh, while I'm here, I'm going to put some little stuffing in a stamp here. So just start with a little bit of polyester stuffing. You can get it started. You can come in with a chopstick or your scissors, whatever you can use to just get it to go up into the little spaces. And then once your tail is done, you can come in with some more and start putting it into the rest of the little body. Then we'll just sew up a little more. Stuff some more, sew more, stuff more until the little guy's all done. And I'm on the last stitch for my darling little fox. So what I'm gonna do is just come through the back here, match up to one of the other little stitches here And I'll just bring my needle through the loop. And I'll do that one more time. And then I'll just bring my needle through the side seam, through the little fox, poke it out. Give it a little tug and cut it off. And there's the little fox. We've now got five little animals and let's put it together on the hoop. I'm sitting here looking at my little fox and I realized I didn't finish his little nose. So all we need to do is add the little line that goes below the nose and that will just complete him. So I'm going to come in with some black and I'll just start up in here 
just so I've got a little bit of a tail so it will stay in there okay and I'll just poke it through until I get it pointed out right at the point of the bottom of his nose there and I'll let this slide through just till it's inside there we go and then we'll just bring it down and I'm going to bring it right through up into the nose here and there we've got the completed nose now and we'll just cut that off okay I'm happy now and I made up a couple little mushrooms to add to the center string um, just some beige, some red on both sides, and then just brought in some lines to make it look like a, a little mushroom. Okay, so I've got my five animals. I've got some foliage, some mushrooms, and we've got some beads, and I've got three little sizes here. And these I got from Michael's. It's actually from Bead Landing, and it's the value pack because it was the most economical way to buy the beads. And I'm using a 10 inch embroidery hoop, just the inside ring, and that's 25.4 centimeters. And you want something that's got, you know, the, the eye that's large enough to thread your thread through, but not so big that it won't go through your smallest bead. So as long as your needle will fit through the bead, then you're set. I will be using the 100% crochet cotton, but the super mercerized cotton. This is really strong and it should hold up quite nicely for your mobile. Fold all three pieces in half and then find your middle. Bring all three pieces together at the middle. And once you've got them all neatly together at the same length, we're just going to tie a knot. And then you're going to cinch up your knot so you're about one inch away from the top and that would be about 2.54 centimeters. You'll also need a nice large darning needle with a great big eye. One that you can get all six strands through because we need to thread on our beads. If you don't have a needle this size, don't fret. You can just Put all your strands through individually, one at a time, but of course it's a lot faster if you can get all six through at the same time. Now let's thread on one of our little beads. So we're going to start with my smallest bead. Then the next size. And my largest one and we're going to bring that up to the end where my knot is so the knot will hold this this bead in place and then we're going to tie another knot down on here on this end now and take the needle off and let's tie another knot as tight as you can and as close as you can to that last bead. So just hold your fingers right up close to that bead and work it up so it's right under that bead. Now this knot will be smaller than the opening perhaps 
So if that's the case in your case, then let's do one more knot and make that knot even bigger. Again, holding your fingers so it stays right up close to that knot. And there we've got a bigger knot that will not bring that bead down. And now we're ready to attach our strings to the hoop. Now you're just going to fan out your five pieces here and one will be left in the middle. So there's another one. Okay, so we're not going to tie right off, pull tight here. We want a little bit of slack so this lives up a little bit more like a tent. So let's take our first one here and we know where the center is right here. And let's measure from the center and we're going to measure out about six inches, or that would be about 15.2 centimeters. So we're right about here, and that's where we're gonna tie it off to our hoop. So we're gonna just bring this back, and just hold on to it, and we're gonna bring this around two times. And once you've got that wrapped around two times, we're going to bring this down and then we're going to tie it off. So just tie a knot. There's the first loop of the knot and we're going to tie down to the bottom here. And let's tie that off one more time. That's your first one. And now we're going to go around and do the same for all the other ones. So this is what you should have. Your five strings, one in the middle, and each one of these strings is sitting at about six inches or 15.2 centimeters apart. And now this is the time to adjust your balance. If it's looking like it's sitting a little bit lower on one side, then you'll have to adjust your string and make it tighter on those sides. I'm gonna adjust this one a little bit and make this just a bit tighter so this brings up the left side. So I've added four of the animals and the leaves in the center with the mushrooms. And as you can see, it's not balanced because I have to add my last little animal on this side. So we'll do this one with you. So I've threaded my needle and I'm going to start with one of my larger beads and we'll just work that up to the top. And then I'm just going to bring my needle back through the hole. And that will be enough just to hold it up to the top there. Now I haven't made all of these the same. I purposely did them random. So I mean, that's nature, right? You're not going to have everything exactly the same. So I might have put a lighter leaf here or the maple leaf further down and varied how I did the beads. And this is how I've added all of my leaves. I'm just going to come closer to the stem of the leaf. That's the top side. And then for the back side, I'm just going to do a little tiny straight stitch in the back. And then bring my needle through the loop and that will secure that leaf at that position. So then carry on and add your beads in the desire you want and the leaves that you want. And then I'll show you how I add on the animal at the end. I did short myself a little bit when I calculated the length of my strands here, but not to worry. Earlier on in the video, I told you the correct length to cut your strands at. So now for this little guy, I'm going to come in through the top of the head 
and I'm going to push my needle right through until it comes out the bottom and the middle. And then I'll let that pull through. And then we're going to add a bead on the end to secure it all together. So again, we threaded it on. I'm going to come back through. Now it's time to come in and just adjust your length. I've got these a little bit varied. They don't have to all sit at the same length. I think varied is better. So once you know where you want your little guy to sit, then come in and do your final knot. I'm going to sneak it in here. And then bring it through my loop. And yes, you're going to have more length to work to work with. And then to hide the strand left over, you can thread your needle again. And then just come back through the hole again. That will bring your loose end through the ball and then just trim off your end and it'll be nice and neat and tidy. And then you can just pull this little guy down again to where you want it to sit. And then you can test for balance. If you feel that it's a little bit high on one side, then you can come in and add another bead to the end and that will bring your weight as a counterbalance just to make it perfectly balanced. And there is our completed woodland animal baby mobile. Look at the darling little raccoon and a bear and a fox and a squirrel and an owl. And a few little mushrooms in the middle. And there you go. We've made a couple baby mobiles. I did the safari one on my own because that was a crooked design. And we did the woodland one with you because that was more easy to get the patterns for yourself. But feel free to do an ocean theme, whatever you want to do. They'll all look so adorable in a baby room. Thanks again for watching. And until next time, bye bye.